many people here want their kids to be happy? That's not possible. <laughs> on our flight home from our honeymoon. We get on the plane, we take off, go above the clouds, 50,000 feet above sea level. She goes to the tiny little airplane bathroom. She comes back to our seats and she looks me in the eye and she says, I'm pregnant. <laughs> it's funny to you. She bought the pregnancy test in the Malaysian pharmacy airport. I had it. it wasn't just I'm pregnant, it was like I'm pregnant, see? How many people here are parents in this room? Show of hands, lots of people. How many people here want their kids to be happy? We all do, and you know what? Even people that aren't parents, which is amazing. She says to me on the plane, she's like, I just want my kids to be happy. And you know what I said? That's not possible. I had, had all these books come out, all this stuff, and I wasn't happy during that. I wasn't sleeping. I had lost 40 pounds due to stress. And you know what everybody at work was saying to me? You look great. <laughs> and so I said to her, you can't make yourself happy. It's random. And I start a nine month research project. When you go to Google, which is as you can tell where I begin all my research, and you type in how to be, what do you think the first suggestion is? You're right, happy. As a society, are we there yet? Our wealth, we're three times richer than we were. Technology, better than ever before. Education, higher than ever before. Anything related to abundance is up. Except for one thing. Happiness, flatlined. It hasn't moved from 1955. It is still about 20% of people in society say that they are happy or very happy. So wait, we want it more than anything else. We don't got it yet. Can we get it? Our parents told us this. My mom and dad, they said to me, Neil, if you do great work, then you'll have a big success and then you'll be happy. Does this sound familiar? If you study really hard, then you'll get good grades. And if you're East Indian, you become a doctor. <laughs> but our parents were wrong. If you be happy first, then you do great work. The average lifespan today in the United States is 30,000 days. You can press a button called happiness and live 3,000 more. It's a powerful button, but how do you press it? Emmons and McCullough actually did an incredible study. At the end of each week, they said they had students write down five gratitudes, another group wrote down five hassles, and another group wrote down five events. Can you guess what happened after 10 weeks? People who wrote down the gratitudes were happier. And if you want to make it even easier, I'll give you a little game you can play um, right before you turn off the lights at the end of the night. If you're with a partner, you do a game called Rose, Rose, Thorn, Bud. My wife Leslie says a rose from her day, which is a gratitude. I say one back. She says another rose from her day. I say one back. She says a thorn from her day. Something that didn't go well, because she doesn't want to sleep on the problem. So let's get it out, okay? Then she says a bud, which is something she's looking forward to. Something she's looking forward to. And I say one back. Rose, rose, thorn, bud. As long as the thorn doesn't turn into a 45 minute argument, and then the big success comes later. We're the only ones with agriculture, architecture, jewelry, democracy, books, buffets, radio waves. We've got so many things to be thankful for, so many things to be happy about. Yet somehow, that little line I showed you at the beginning hasn't budged at all. It can be difficult to remember that every single day, but we know how to get it. We know what to do. The glass is not half full or half empty. It's what we all grew up thinking it was. In fact, the glass is refillable.